Hi guys, how you doing? Um, I just thought I'd do a quick video um, on week 10 just to try and explain what we're looking for with regards to the squats and the heavy lifting. This is the quiet room in the house at the moment, so I'm in one of the boys' rooms. Quite a very boys' room, isn't it? With a globe, picture of space, Batman, Champions League poster. Um, so I just thought I, I wanted to quickly try and explain the thinking or the, un or, or, or the reasoning behind why we're asking you to take th like three or four minutes rest in between sets of heavy squats. I think it's important that you, you, you understand it because if you do, you're much more likely to buy into buy into it and engage with it properly and understand the benefits of it. Um, this is a tricky part in the program we're at now because I need to try and I'm trying to like accommodate everyone who comes in terms of setting up the sessions in such a way that I think can benefit everyone. When I say everyone, I mean one or two things. Everyone's at different stages in their strength journey if you know what i mean you can't rush strength work you can't like accelerate how quickly you get strong well you, you can if you take like steroids and stuff but i just mean generally it's a slow process so usually like if you're a beginner you might be here in your journey if you've been training for a long time with an intensity you might be here so that's one of the, the benefits that's one of the beauties of strength training is it's, it's kind of never ends and there's always more you can try and achieve um and the closer you are or the further along you are in your strength journey um, maybe the closer you are to like a one and a half times body weight back squat, for example, the, the more important it is to sort of be quite particular about sets and reps and in, and, and the weight you're lifting. Whereas if you're a beginner, as long as you're consistently turning up and following the, the, the following the routines and the rep schemes and with a, even some semblance of focus and progressive overload, you'll get stronger. It's called newbie gains and it tends to happen for anyone in their first year of training when they've not done strength work before, they enjoy really good progress. Progress then starts to slow down and plateau after that, and then it becomes a lot harder um, to continually get stronger um, as you reach your natural physical like potential. Um, so it becomes a wee bit more, like, you need to be a bit more particular. So, uh, that's the, so that the challenge is to try and do that for everyone, while equally try to accommodate folk that have maybe missed a few weeks through illness, or injury, or holidays, that are maybe feeling a bit daunted by the prospect of reading an email that says, right, you're going to go really heavy in squats, we're doing reps of three, we're looking for a maximum effort. That's not what you want to hear if you've missed a few weeks with injury, for example, right? So it's so there's, it's, it's, it's a bit of a balancing act, um, which I think we've managed to do pretty good so far, but this is the bit, this, this the next couple of weeks when you're lifting heavy, this is where you're going to like enjoy some really good strength improvements, but everyone's different. So if you have missed a few weeks, I would say just come back on the squats, Pick a weight where you know you can do sets of five or six reps, right? Just up and down, nice and smooth, focus on your depth, and then stick to that for the first session back until you gain a bit of confidence, feel a bit good moving again, okay? But for those that have been training consistently in the last month or whatever, we're looking for what we're looking for is sets of three reps on the squats. Now, the idea behind that is that obviously if you're, you're doing sets of three, you're doing two less reps maybe than what we've been doing the last couple of weeks. So the whole point is if you're dropping the reps, it's because you're increasing the weight. So you can't do as many reps at a heavier weight, obviously. Okay, so that's the first thing that you need to sort of be aware of. So you might want to do a warm-up set and then your first set of three reps could be at the set or the weight you did for five reps last week, for example. So it's in other words, it's at a weight that you know that three reps isn't too bad. Okay, and then, as far as it's achievable at least, that can be your, your warm-up sets, okay? But at that point, you need to be quite on it because what we're looking for is the problem being with three reps is that what we need is multiple sets, okay? Because volume's still important when it comes to strength work. Like, we need to consider the volume. So when you're doing, the higher the reps, the less volume you kind of need to do. So if you're doing sets of five, for example, then four sets, maybe five sets is probably... At your maximum that's enough volume if you've got the weight right and it's really quite difficult to achieve five reps at that weight um from the by that same token like there's a huge difference between like three sets of 10 reps versus 10 sets of three reps okay so if you now the volume of those is the same 30 sets or 30, 30 reps sorry okay 10 sets three reps, three reps it's same it's the same volume 30 reps but the intensity will be very different um, if you're doing three reps for 10 sets at a really heavy weight. 
Okay, and now the one, and that's kind of what we're looking for. I'm not saying you need to do ten sets, but what we are looking for if you're coming down to three reps, is that four or five sets is probably not quite enough. It's it's probably not quite enough. It will probably elicit a little bit of a change, even from a neuro point of view, because you, just putting a heavier weight in your bar on your back and lifting it for four or five sets is enough to probably create an adaption a few weeks down the line. But what we're really looking for is six sets at the new heavy weight possibly even seven sets but six sets would be good and if you can do six sets or seven sets you'll really be aware of it you'll start to think god i can feel that in my legs even though i'm only doing three reps so that is what we're tr trying to look at that's when it gets quite challenging from a setup point of view as well because if, if this was just like a group a uh, one-to-one one, it'd be easy obviously but the idea is to try and accommodate everyone to do that you need a lot of equipment multiple squat racks etc but you also need everyone on board with it to understand why they're doing this as opposed to it can be quite i think if you understand it you'll get more out of it mentally you'll enjoy, you'll understand the process and you'll enjoy the process as opposed to like if you're just interested in measuring your heart rate and seeing how many calories you're burning a session you're not going to appreciate the benefits of strength training because by very nature three reps isn't going to get your heart rate flying up it's also not going to burn a lot of calories at the time. But what it is going to do is build strength and build muscle, which is going to have a more knock-on positive effect out with the sessions. So it's important you try and view that what you're doing in the sessions as, as, and as to what it's going to do if you're out with the sessions. By that same token, talking of calories, it, it works the same way in another, in another direction. If you're focusing just on the calories burned in the session or the heart rate of the session, so you might look at your watch and think, great, I've burned 600 calories in this session because I've done loads of volume. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't. All it means is you've you've worked hard and that's good. But it doesn't make any difference. Burning six hundred calories in a session is irrelevant because, in the context of what happens outside the gym and outside the other twenty three hours of the week, it is an irrelevance. It's not going to. It doesn't. It, it's not a sign of any. It's not a sign of anything at all, really. Um, other than you're working hard within the session. But what are the session aims? Are you, is the session aims to work hard? Because if it is, you could just do a thousand burpees. You'd burn a lot of calories doing that. You wouldn't get stronger though. Um, so the, and that and so it's important to see that the purpose and the benefit of the rest in between the sets is is yeah your heart rate might drop, but that's why that's that's why we're doing it is to allow for a decent enough recovery in order for you to maintain a really high intensity. Um, and the reason for that is because there's energy systems at play. Different energy systems will, will fuel different movements in different like different sort of activities so for example like long distance running that's an aerobic activity so that's the oxygen system the o2 system the aerobic system that's that's what fuels that um that's the, it's the oxygen that fuels the the continual production of atp energy adenosine triphosphate whereas when it comes to heavy heavy lifting or maximum sprinting 10 10 100 meters for example that requires an enormous amount of energy and it, it requires it to be like generated extremely quickly. And the, the O2 system, the aerobic system, doesn't produce energy quickly. It doesn't recycle it quickly enough. Um, and what it does is a different energy system called the creatine phosphate system. So creatine phosphate is a system, in the, is a substance in the body which helps generate and recycle ATP extremely quickly and in, in, in large amounts to produce this big bang of energy, like an atomic bomb, boom, and then that's how you lift heavy, or that's how you sprint really fast. But as you know, Usain Bolt can't run 800 meters. Can't we well, can't run it very fast because it's different energy systems at play here. Um, so the creatine phosphate system, which is designed to produce these huge bursts of energy very quickly, also depletes extremely quickly, like within 10 or 20 seconds, and it then replenishes itself but we know that it takes at least three minutes to replenish so that is why you need to take at least three minutes in between sets so hopefully that makes sense that so if you're lifting really a, a, a appropriately heavy weight too when i use the word heavy it's an ambiguous word it just means it's all relative it's it's what's heavy to the individual and we've covered this with the gym aware that it's to do with the, the intensity is to do with the weight you lift relative to you, which you can measure via the bar speed. So 100 kilos to one person might not be heavy. 
because they can lift 200. It's all to do with your maximum strength capabilities. So it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a it's an arbitrary term, heavy, because it, it, what what heavy to one isn't heavy to someone else. Okay, so as long as you're lifting a heavy weight relative to you and your strength ability, you will need two or three minutes in between. Or I said two or three minutes. I'm just being casual with that. It's really three minutes um, in between in order to recover or allow for an appropriate recovery to to maintain the intensity to allow you to keep lifting that same weight for six or seven sets. You'd be amazed the amount of folk over the years that told them just to take an extra two minutes and do nothing and then they go to lift it and suddenly they can lift it and it feels much better because that's you can't speed up the replenishment of creating the, the, the creatine phosphate system um, yeah you can take creatine which tops up the availability of it but it doesn't speed up you can you still have to allow the three minutes so just bear that in mind please and hopefully you'll understand why we're doing this because the ma more maximum strength you have then it means you'll, you'll you'll be able to then work harder at a sub maximal level okay so for example doing those step ups right i'm amazed very few folk find it that hard in their legs because they've all got nice strong legs now right it was upper body but if you're lifting like a weight up if you can deadlift 100 kilos lifting 220k dumbbells is nothing do you know what I mean? So it's like that. Anyway, my time's about to run out in the storage on this phone, so I better stop. So building maximum strength allows you to then work longer at the sub-maximal levels. Okay, hope that makes sense.